Welcome to Better Inspired Social. Welcome to Lisbon. Welcome to the launch of BMW's new CEO2 electric scooter. Sorry, can't call it a scooter. It's a mode of transport. It's neither a motorcycle or a scooter. It kind of looks like a BMX has been hit by a skateboard, but whatever your view on design, I like it. But let me run you through some little facts and figures before we go into the review. So we have two versions. You've got the 11 kilowatt version and a four kilowatt version. What means that in the UK is you've got kind of a 50 cc equivalent and a 125 equivalent. Uh, torque is 55 newton meters. Weight is 132 kilograms. Range is a quoted 90 kilometers and top speed is a quoted 95 kilometers. And that's on the 125 equivalent, which is what we've been riding today. And this is also the Highline version. So this is the top spec version. Now BMW quote a top speed of 95, but I saw over 100 today. And they also quote a range of 90 kilometers and I got about 75 estimated range. But obviously I've been riding a little bit heavy with the throttle and just enjoying this amazing city here in Lisbon. So welcome to Lisbon. And yeah, you're right, we're in perfect silence. Because this is BMW's CEO2 electric scooter. So let me just pull up against Ricardo. So as you can tell, the enclosed wheels. See the two pegs, feet forward or feet back, it's your choice. It's fully electric uh, from BMW. Nothing of the CEO4 is on this bike, it's a completely new bike. It's 125 equivalent. Um, BMW call it uh, e parkour but it is essentially a 125 scooter. But it's not a scooter and it's not a motorbike. It's To me it's kind of like where a BMX hits a skateboard and then hit an electric vehicle. Uh, but it does look good. I'll have to give it that. That is a stylish, cool bike in a stylish, cool city. Um, we've only just got on the bikes. So it's just twist and go. Front brake on the right, back brake on the left. Twist it, go forward, belt driven. And then you have three rider modes to select from. We've got ABS on the front, but not the back because they want people to have fun and do some skids because it's aimed at a young audience. It can be restricted for as like a 50cc moped. So in some countries you can be 14 and ride this. You can feel the engine brake in there, not the regen. And we got a full day here in Lisbon, which is, I only just got here late last night. It's a pretty cool city. So, there is obviously the big discussion of do electric bikes work? For me, electric sports bikes, not really. Electric tourers, not really. Because we don't have the range, we don't have the power yet. Electric trials bikes, definitely. Because you don't need the range. Electric scooters, mopeds, call them what you want, definitely. Because you don't need the range. This has got a range of 90 to 100 kilometers, depending on how you ride. So yeah, if I had the choice, even before I've ridden this bike, and I lived in the city, then I go electric over petrol. It's just so much easier. Quiet, simplistic, silent. No heat, no fumes, no nothing. So when we go to charging times, let's concentrate on the 11 kilowatt version, which is the 125 version. From zero to 100% is 312 minutes. But to be honest, you're never gonna get to a 0% in the same way you never use your mobile phone till it dies. You always start charging it at like 20, 30%. So if you're looking at a charge from 20 to 80% and you've got the Highline version with the fast charger, you're looking at 168 minutes from 20 to 80%. And we're going to focus on the 11 kilowatt or the 125 equivalent version, which is the bike we'll be riding today. And this is the top of the end model. So we've got heated grips, multiple rider modes, traction control, uh, the connectivity, the phone mount. This has got all the bells and whistles. There's three rider modes. So you've got three rider modes. You've got flow, you've got surf, and you've got flash. In typical BMW style, they don't call them A, B, and C, or slow, medium, and high. Flash is the only mode that you get with the Highline accessories. So in standard, you just get flow and surf. Then the, the other one is flash. I've been riding in surf for the majority of the day because with surf, you have no engine braking, no regen, as you want to call it. So it kind of feels like a two-stroke 125 scooter. So when you look close to the throttle, you just keep free riding. And I think that's the way you're going to get the remote amount of range. If you use one of the other models, you do get some regen, which is kind of like engine braking. And don't worry, because BMW have got some stability control, so there's never enough engine braking that will lock the back. They've also got traction control, which you might find slightly alarming on a 125 equivalent scooter, but there's so much torque 
on even dry cobbles, you can hit the throttle and you can hear the little back wheel chirping and spinning. So in the wet, when it's cold and greasy, and you're in Paris, Milan or London, you're gonna need that traction. ABS is not lean sensitive and it's on the front only. The reason they've done it on the front only is so you can pull skids and have some fun. If you've never ridden an electric scoot before, the back brake is on the hands, front brake is on the right. You've also got something which is quite unique, which is reverse. To be honest, it's quite light and quite manageable and quite easy to move around, so arguably you don't really need reverse, but it comes in handy when you park it on a hill. Overall, as you'd expect from BMW, the quality is really high. The suspension feels really plush, it feels really nice. It's a direct shock with no linkage, so when you hit some big bumps, you do get a little bit of a jar, and this has got the comfort seat fitted as well. So it's a little bit jarry over some of the cobbles, but the roads over here in Lisbon, some of the potholes you could actually get lost in. So that's fair enough. But the overall feel and quality is really, really premium. This is like being on a sightseeing tour. I just, there are a lot of advantages to electric. One is obviously perfect silence. So you can actually have a conversation between mates on other electric bikes. You kind of feel more involved with the city because you can hear conversations. Um, it's just more involving, I think, to ride in silence in the city. Obviously, you've got no running costs. If you plug it in at work, it's going to be free. It's absolutely simple to ride, instant torque. No lag, no clutch, no gears. There are so, so many advantages of electric, and that's why they work on scooters. It's the simplicity. Wow, Lisbon's nice. I know all my petrol head buddies are going to be like, what? Seriously, Chad? Do you prefer electric over petrol? But when it comes to um, mopeds, scooters, and trials bikes, funnily enough, and you don't need the range, which you don't on a scooter, then it works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it takes a bit. You can feel the weight on the cobbles. Oh, we're going up here. There's a man taking a photo of a ditch. Interesting. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm only in the slow mode. I'm going to have to change the mode so have a bit more fun because this is getting a bit giggly now. Now, with the electric bikes, what's interesting is, you know, you hear the city, you kind of hear other vehicles, um, you're a bit more in tune as what your environment and what's happening, but you also hear what the bike is doing if you've never ridden an electric bike before. So, for example, when you brake, you can hear the hiss of the, the pads grabbing the calipers. And when you go over bumps, you can hear the bodywork moving or, you know, clattering of the side stand or centre stand, for example. And on this, the build quality, as you'd expect from BMW, is really exceptional like that's a quite a heavy hit of a speed hump and over cobbles and you you know nothing's rattling nothing's banging nothing's clattering it's belt driven so you don't have a chain whacking anything like you would on some of the uh, sports bikes or other electric vehicles i've ridden electric scooters before loads of electric scooters and you've always got something like, like the centre stand spring isn't very strong. So when you go over a bump, the centre stand hits the bike underneath. You can constantly hear this clattering or the body work flexes or feel, doesn't feel solid or robust because it's, it's like bending and flexing and you can hear so much because you haven't got that engine noise. But uh, no, this is extremely impressive. With all electric motorcycles, I think all, you really get a sense of the build quality more than a petrol bike. Because on a petrol bike, you can't really hear what's happening because you've got the noise of the engine. On an electric bike, you can hear the belt drive turning, you can hear the brake disc grabbing, the, sorry, the brake pads grabbing the brake disc, you can hear the bodywork moving, flexing, banging. And when you ride this hard over cobbles, it just feels robust, it feels solid. I've ridden other electric scooters and when you go over a speed hump, you can hear the center stand clacking against something. You can hear the bodywork cracking and creaking. And it feels like the bike's falling to bits as you ride it. Where this doesn't, this feels very, very premium. And very, 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 very premium. Very high quality. In terms of looks and style, I think it looks fabulous. I think it absolutely looks stunning. And here in Lisbon, it's been turning heads. As soon as you park this bike in Lisbon, everybody's taking a photograph of it. 
I think it looks brilliant. I mean, we've had uh, designers here at BMW saying where they found inspiration, and I can see it. it's kind of skateboardy, it's kind of BMX, it's kind of surf, it's kind of cool, but it does look really individual, and that's what I like the most. I don't, I don't want to fall into too many cliches, but it just looks different. It looks different from everything else on the road, and you can do that with an electric bike because you're not configured by an engine and a petrol tank and where everything has to be. So design-wise, you can almost do what you want. And that's what they've done. I think it looks brilliant. In terms of riding it around Lisbon today, I think electric scooters work. Uh, I don't think we're there with electric power on touring bikes or sports bikes, but off-road, trials, motocross, and in town on scooters, we are, because you don't need the range. Electric scooters make perfect sense. Simple, easy to ride, silent, no emissions. You can talk to your pillion, you can talk to other people, you feel more immersed in the city. It's much more involving thing to do. There's no heat, no fumes, no smell. I know my petrol headed friends will not like that, but electric scooters make a lot of sense. And in terms of what it's like against the competition, this is the best electric 125cc equivalent scooter you can buy. There you go, that's not so bad, is it? Ah, yeah, yeah, ah. There's a problem. And that's the price. Because it's expensive. Very expensive. Price wise, we're looking at 8450 for the 11 kilowatt base version. Then we've got to put on the Highline package, which is another £850. This has got the Comfort C, which is about another £200. So you're looking between 9003 and 9005 ish for a 125cc equivalent scooter. Now, once you've fallen off your chair and you've got back on your chair, let me run something else past you. If you want to buy this on PCP, you're looking at £121 a month. If you want to travel in London, between zone one and two on the tube, it's £150 a month. So do you want to travel around London at £150 a month and have an Oyster card, or do you want to travel around London on one of these, look stylish for less money? And that's what you've got to think about. 120 quid a month, think about it. Is that a big amount of money? Well, I guess that's down to you in the end user. It'd be interesting to see your comments and what you think of the price below. But I can see people who've got motorhomes. I can see people who've got an X5 or an X7 at home and they want a cheap mode of transport. This is going to hit that market. This is going to be in your garage at the back and this is your bike that you just pull out for a quick commute. Well, 120 quid a month, it is expensive, but I can definitely see people buying it. And if you want the best electric scooter out there, this is it by far. <music>